Okay, so welcome to the online learning platform of uh, Department of Civil Engineering, BMS Institute of Technology and Management. So in the course Highway Engineering 18.3.5.6, today I will be discussing the basic concepts from module one, that is principles of transportation engineering. To quickly recap, in the last class we have uh, seen what is the importance of transportation engineering subject. What is a transportation engineer do? What is the scope of a transportation engineer in the current scenario? Then how environment and economy is linked to transportation engineering? And also we have seen what are the different five modules that you have in this entire course. So the syllabus, a brief introduction to the syllabus was also given to you. So today I'll be starting with module one. So module one, if you look at it, module one consists of three different parts. So I have uh, classified the module one as module one A, one B, and one C. So in module one A part, you have principles of transportation engineering, wherein what the importance of transportation, then what are the different modes of transportation and its comparison, then what are the different uh, road or highway development committees that are formed in India and what are its characteristics. In module 1b, you have highway development and planning. So in this you will see what are the different types of road and how road is being classified based on several parameters. Then how the road pattern development is, then what do you mean by master plan, then what is saturation system of road planning, then how is uh, phasing of road development in India been done, and then how will you choose the best alignment among any alternate proposals? In 1B, 1C, you have highway alignment survey. So in here, you will see what is, a diff what is an ideal alignment, then what are the different factors that affect in choosing any alignment, then what do you mean by engineering survey, and the map study recognizance, which I have, uh, you know, which I told you that you would have already studied in your basic survey and one survey. So now, uh, starting with the module. So in module 1A, we will be discussing about the importance of transportation and the characteristics of characteristics, recommendations and implementation of several road uh, development uh, committee that is being formed. So first, we will see what a transportation system is. So a transportation system analysis has been emerged as a recognized profession now. So more and more uh, government organizations and universities, researchers, consultants, and private industrial groups around the world are becoming truly uh, a model in their orientation. And they are trying to develop a systematic approach to any transportation problem. So there are uh, diverse uh, characteristics of any transportation system, which make the design or which make the planning more diverse and more complex. Okay, so this characteristics would not have come across your mind over these past three years. So this diverse characteristics itself make transportation engineering or transportation system more challenging and more complex. So the characteristics are it is multi-model. So mode of transport means what are the different uh, modes how you can uh, travel. Okay, so the different modes as you know are air, land, and sea. And that includes both for passengers and freight. So freight in the sense for goods transport. So usually good transport is being labeled as freight transport, F-R-I-E-G-H-T. So you have passenger transport as well as freight transport. So this transportation system has to cover all these modes. But in highway engineering, your study has been restricted only onto what? Only onto road system. That that again in land system you have road as well as rail so rail will be discussed as a totally different elective in your next semester so now you have only road or highway engineering but the different modes of transport are air land and sea and that is both for passengers and for goods or fruit multi-sector so multi-sector why it's because uh, whenever a highway is being developed or whenever any transportation system is being developed what are the different components for any transportation system if you consider a highway, it has the roadway, then it should be having the pedestrian way, it should be having parking lot, it should be having bus stations, then uh, the gas stations, 
right then you have bus stands okay then you have uh, some land that has to be allocated for future development so multi sector because this uh, transportation system encompasses the problems and view points of all that means they have to consider the view point of government they have to consider the view point of private sector they have to consider the view point of uh, public industry as well so that is why it is multi sector just like a government cannot take a call on okay about the development of this transportation system any private sector cannot take a call on development of a transportation system so that is why again this uh, uh, transportation system analysis becomes more complex then multi problem so usually whenever a transportation system is being developed or is proposed the problems can range from national to international level that means the issues that includes national and international policy then planning of regional system then location and design of specific facilities then regulatory institutional financial policy so that's why it's a multi problem multi objective why because it aims at national and regional economic development right in last class we have seen how important a transportation system is for the development of the nation then develop then urban development environmental quality social quality as well as its service to users and financial and economic feasibility so just because you have a highway or just because you have transportation system developed it doesn't mean that it should be economical or it should be sustainable so these are the objectives also that has to be met economic development should be met environmental development should be met and then it should be sustainable then it should multidisciplinary so drawings on the theories and methods of engineering it has it should just not like you know as a civil engineer you propose a highway or we propose a highway and it's been accepted no then there should be economic analysis coming up there should be operations research then political science psychology then other natural and social sciences management and law all these disciplinaries come together for the development of any transportation system okay so next uh, why is this uh, challenging why is the study important or why you would opt transportation engineering as your higher uh, career option or maybe a, or as a high studies option why because there is a strong interrelationship and interaction between the transportation and rest of the society especially because why there is rapid change in the world and that should be significant as a transportation planner so where are the changes that is uh, coming changes in the demand right so when the population income and land use pattern changes what happens the pattern of demand changes because initially when you look back 5 years or 10 years back each household could afford only one vehicle sometimes it might be one two wheeler or one four wheeler but now if you have four members in the family the it's like you know almost four vehicles are there sometimes it may be four two wheelers or four four wheelers right so based on the population based on the income and based on the land use patterns the demand also changes then changes in technology so uh, like if we see in the uh, uh, older times or in earliest times the only two alternative was to either depend on bus or depending on rail but now there are mass rapid transit systems right so this we will see in the coming class what mass rapid transit systems then we have uh, when we have change in operational policy like variety of policy options are designed to actually improve the efficiency such as uh, if you are uh, you know opting for car pool the government will provide you incentive then uh, there is there might be some consideration in bus fare mainly for students they will be giving you bus bus fare uh, concession so that uh, change in operation policy can be perceived in two different ways one is it helps the students and one is it promotes the students or promotes office goers to depend on what to depend on public transport because if you look around most of the it firms they provide what they provide transportation system or uh, they provide mass transportation system for the employees so why so they they actually save the money in uh, in what in traveling and again it's a good initiative right so then changes in value of the public earlier what happens all beneficiaries of the system was uh, considered as users now 
what happens is one must identify the target groups like rich then rich people depend on this then the young people depend on this then work trip is different leisure trip is different so as the changes in value of the uh, public was uh, changing the transport the the way in which the dependence on transportation system is also changing initially we used to have only users but now it is like you know how the rich travel or how the young travel how the old people like to travel how the work the work trip is like or how the leisure trip is like okay so now as a uh, transportation engineer this interaction between the transportation and activity system of a region is really important so the approach should be to intervene delicately and deliberately in the complex fabric of society to use transport effectively in coordination with what in coordination with public and private actions to achieve the goals of the society so now these are the different disciplines or branches of transportation engineering so uh, you have transportation planning geometric design payment design traffic engineering public transportation then financial and economic analysis environmental impact assessment accident analysis and reduction and then intelligent transport system so transportation planning means it essentially involves what it's it essentially involves the development of a transport model which will actually represent both current and the future requirements of a transportation system okay so that is mainly been done by transportation planning or a transportation planning engineer then in the geometric design or what is the difference between this geometric design and payment design so if you look at any highway okay you find the geometric parameters like what is the width suppose you have a curve what is the length of the curve suppose you have a vertical curve so what is the terrain or what is the uh, uh, you know um, the slope that should be provided you have the super elevation coming what should be the angle then the drain what is the width so some roads you might find two lane some roads are eight lane eight lane is again distributed as four and four sometimes it will be three and three and one only for bus transit so how these geometric design is been done that has been done by geometric design engineer okay so all the geometric features of a highway payment design is again if you look at the same highway you have a cross section like if you cut through it at the bottom you have soil which is nothing but the subgrade then based on the type of road that anyways we will see in module 1b so based on the type of the road the materials that will be coming there will be totally different right so uh that is also there so that has been done by payment design engineer that means what type of uh, materials should go because most of you would have done your pbl and uh, you would have uh, done something on payment design right so, so nowadays people tend to use uh payments which can absorb water or which can easily let water flow through or uh, which actually removes skidness and then uh, there are payments which actually reduce waste materials okay so these have been done by payment design engineer traffic engineering is another uh, uh, discipline of uh, transportation engineering so here uh, they cover a broad range of engineering applications with a focus on what with a focus on safety of the public the efficient use of transportation resources and mobility of people and good so it involves a variety of engineering and management skills including design operation and system optimization so that has been done by a traffic engineer so you might have seen the signal design right in some signals you may have to wait only for 15 signals so 15 seconds some signal you may have to wait for 120 seconds sometimes more than that sometimes you may not the same signal which used to be used which used to show 120 seconds is not even this no delay so all these are been done and planned by traffic engineer so the traffic engineer will uh, analyze the peak traffic or analyze the flow of the traffic or analyze the flow of the vehicles and then provide this so this, this is a very basic uh, example that i can give what a traffic engineer will be doing and again in the same highway you might be or sorry again in the same uh, lane or in the same signal at different times of the day the signal time will be varying so that is also been done by analyzing what amount of vehicle or what is the inflow on that signal then another important um, in this planes are public transportation so a public transportation or mass transportation engineer deals with the study of transportation system that meets the travel need of several people by sharing a vehicle 
So generally, it uh, focuses on urban travel, not on rural travel. On urban travel, mainly on bus and rail transit. Then financial and economical analysis. So transport uh, facilities usually require large investments, right? So how much ever you invest, that um, return should also be done. So it is imperative that whoever invests the money should get the returns. So this study. So when government invests in transportation, the objective is not often monetary returns, but usually it is social return. So the economic analysis of transportation projects usually try to quantify the economic benefit, which includes what will be the economic benefit for any project. It will be uh, saving in travel time, fuel consumption, etc. Next, uh, environmental impact assessment. So the depletion of uh, fossil fuels and uh, degradation of environment has had severe concern of the planners in the last few decades. So this environmental impact assessment attempts in now uh, quantifying the environmental impacts and try to evolve strategies for reducing the impact. Accident analysis and reduction. So uh, in this uh, discipline, why accidents have been occurring at one point you know, in a recurring state. So that has been an analyzed and then methods or you know, so solutions are uh, given to reduce this accident. Then the recent uh, trending uh, in uh, transportation engineering is intelligent transport system. So with the advent of computers, communication, and vehicle technology, it is possible in these days to operate transportation system with uh, significant reduction in adverse impact of transportation. So this uh, is usually you know, done by the help of uh, the state of their technology. So these are the different disciplines of transportation engineering. So I hope you have understood. We have transportation planning, geometric design, payment design, traffic engineering, public transport, financial economic analysis, environmental impact assessment, accident analysis, uh, analysis and prediction, and then intelligent transport. So anyone who is interested to pursue their career in transportation engineering can look into these eight disciplines and then choose in which uh, sector you want to be in. So now what's the importance of uh, transportation? So it enables communication, trade, and other forms of exchange between people. Then it play an important part in economic growth and globalization. But most types cause what? Cause air pollution and use a large amount of land. Then a uh, good planning of transport is actually essential to manage traffic flow. And it's usually you know, vulnerable to security threats. So because of this uh, complexity, more and more government organizations, universities, researchers, consultants are working together to opt a systematic approach to any transportation problems. So different uh, modes of transportation system and its comparison. So this I don't think I have to explain much. So here the transport environment mainly you have Mainly you have three, you have land, water, and then air. So in land, you have road, rail, then cycling, walk, and then the pipe systems. In water, you have inland waterway, and then the naval, and then air. So this is the contribution uh, of the transportation, the transport environment. So no travel, which is usually 30%. Then on foot 22.6%, bicycle 13.1%, uh, motorcycle 12.7%, car and jeep is 27 So you can just look around and see how it is. So it's again a simple illustration to show what are different modes of transport. It's land, water, and air. So now this is an interesting uh, slide. How uh, highway engineering is developed or how, what is the history of this roads? So the... Type of uh, road can be classified mainly into uh, five that is the ancient roads, then came the Roman roads, then the British roads, then the French roads, and now what we see is the modern road, which is actually developed on French road. So, ancient road before uh, with the evolution of humankind, or mankind, pathways were there, people used to walk, walk by foot, so pathways were developed. 
So once the pathways, they tend to use what they tend to use animals for transporting either the goods or them. So they found that okay, there should be some trackways for the animals to move. So trackways came into picture. Then with the development of wheel, what happened? They found that roads with hard surfaces were required. So that is the uh, flow of ancient road from pathways to roads with hard surface. So after this, the Roman roads were developed. So the earliest uh, large scale road construction is attributed to Romans. They have uh, actually constructed an extensive system of roads radiating in many directions from Rome. So they had a remarkable achievement and provided travel trains across Europe and North Africa. So Romans are actually considered to be the torch bearers of good road construction. And they provide uh, their road design should could provide what could provide good drainage and they use good materials for good workmanship. So due to this uh, good material and good workmanship, obviously what have what would have happened? The roads were very durable, and some of the roads are still existing. So the Roman roads were always were uh, constructed on a firm front subgrade. So subgrade is what you see here at the bottom. The bottommost soil is nothing but the subgrade. So over the subgrade, what so I hope you can see the diagram here. So 10 to 20 centimeter thick subgrade was laid. Over that, they have given large foundation stones in lime mortar. Okay. And these are the lime mortar, but they have used large foundation stones, and these stones were joined by using lime mortar. The total thickness of the pavement was one to two meter. So that means if you cut across the pavement, you will be finding 0 0.75 to 1.2 meter above the subgrade. So then broken stones were again uh, used in lime concrete. Then again, they had lime concrete. So these are the curb stones, okay? And then large stone slabs of 10 to 15 centimeter thick was provided. The width was 2.2 to 2.5. So you understood you have the subgrade of 10 to 20 centimeter thick, then large foundation stone, then broken stone and lime concrete, then lime concrete, then large stone slabs. So the main features of the Roman road were they were built straight regardless of the gradient. So there was there were no gradient being provided. So what happened is the drainage was an issue. They mixed uh, what lime and volcanic pozzolano to make mortar and they added gravel to this mortar to make concrete. So actually uh, the major innovation by the Romans were this concrete. So the concrete was a major Roman road making innovation. So the next uh, major development in road came along with British, uh, sorry, came along with French roads. So, uh, yeah. so the next one is French road. So this is an example of French road. French road. So the significant uh, contribution was uh, given by Tresagate in 1764. So he developed a So he developed a cheaper method of con uh, construction that was uh, uh, that used locally available materials and it was not as lavish as the Roman roads were in a lot of lime and concrete was coming into picture. So here what happens is the smaller uh, pieces of broken roads were used and they were compacted into the spaces. Right? So the maximum density was achieved. So all this uh, structure was placed in a trench in order to keep the running surface level with the surrounding countryside. But this created a major drainage problem, which was, so here what happens is, if you have this kind of a slope, what happens? The moment it starts to rain, obviously all these materials will be going to the rain, drain. So to though this was the drawback, to avoid that, they laid a sloping very surface. And that surface was impervious as possible. And uh, then uh, ditches were provided or side drains were provided. So next, after this, the British uh, government also gave importance to road construction. So British engineer John McAdam. So this is a important name that you should remember in highway engineering. McAdam, it is M, okay? McAdam. 
So John uh, McAdam introduced what can be considered as the first scientific pro construction method. Anyone who's preparing for any of these uh, PSU exams or any gate exams, this is an important question. John McAdam was the pioneer in scientific pro construction technique or method. So for him, stone size was an important element. So by empirical observation, what do you mean by empirical study? So empirical study is nothing but by conducting experiments, by conducting several trials. Finally, a method or, a, or an equation to be developed. So in this, by empirical observation of many roads, he came to realize what that 250 mm layers of broke, well compacted broken angular stone would provide the same strength and stiffness and a better running surface than an expensive payment that is being made. So here you can see the difference, right? This is the Roman road, this is the French road, and this is the British road. So same here again, all the layers are compacted. So rather than providing large foundation stones over here or on the top, he gave compacted broken stones and sorry, gave compact broken stones and they were compacted. So if you look at the subgrade, it was a compacted subgrade. Then again, you have 50 mm broken stones then 37.5 mm broken stones and then the surface goes. So again, a cross loop of this cross loop was given to allow the drainage. And then the total width was 4.5 meter. So I, uh, uh, this experiment you will be conducting in your concrete lab. How uh, how will you analyze the strength of the subgrade? So the modern roads are actually uh, followers of McAdam's construction method. So uh, the same, the construction pattern was same. But again, the surface uh, course that was used was different. You have bituminous road, then you have concrete pavement, right? So again, bituminous uh, uh, materials were mixed. So many easily and locally available materials are tested in lab laboratories and then implemented implemented on roads for making economical and durable payments. So the population of the country is increasing day by day and the lifestyle of the people is also changing. So there should be more and more studies that should be coming in these directions. So anyways, we will see how the payment has been designed, designed and all in the coming classes. So next we have highway development in India. So these are the major breakthroughs that have happened in highway development. First was Jekyll Committee, then from Jekyll Committee, Central Road Fund, Indian Road Conference, Central Road Research Institute was developed. Then you have Motor Vehicle Act of 1936, then National Highway of India uh, imbibed in 1995, then uh, road year plans, then Highway Research Board, then National Transport Policy Committee, and third year, the third 20 year road plan. So, in the coming sections, we will be uh, discussing about uh, Jaker Committee, Central Road Fund, Indian Road Congress, Central Road Research, and Highway Research Board. The next uh, 20 year plan comes in Model 1B. So, what is this Jaker Committee? After the First World War, what happened was the use of motor vehicles considerably increased. So obviously this resulted in what? This resulted in a better road network. So this, uh, the government had to form the committee in 1947 to look into road development. And uh, Mr. Mr. Jaikar was the chairman of this committee. Hence the committee name is Jaikar Committee. So uh, he observed that the road development in the country should not be made uh, for the local government. Why? Because the uh, demand for the road development is beyond the capacity of local government. So it should be made as a national interest and the technical capacity and financial capacity should be given national interest because local government will not be having that enough financial and technical capacity for developing road. Uh, so from this they had to create a fund. So this extra fund or this road development fund was created by taking extra uh, tax which is being levied on petrol from the road users. So this fund that has been uh, generated has been exclusively used only for road development. Then uh, it uh, also it is established in a, as a semi-official technical institution to pool technical knowledge and helps to share ideas and it also acts as an advisory board. From the Jekyll uh, Committee, uh, these many uh, institutions may be developed. 
that is Indian Road Congress, Central Road Fund, and Central Road Research Institute. So, Central uh, Road Fund was formed in 1st March of uh, 1929. 1927, Jaikar Committee was uh, appointed. And in 1st March of 1929, they came up with an idea of Central Road Fund. So, the central government should take proper charge considering what considering road development as a matter of national interest. So, from this 20 year road development plan was given. Why 20 years? Why not 5 years? Because road development cannot happen in 5 years. The, the whatever um, highway has been developed, it should not be for 5 years, right? Because at the moment the highway uh, work has been completed, it will take 5 years. It should be planned for at least 20 years. So more stress on long-term planning program for a period of 20 years. So to hold uh, periodic road conferences to discuss about road construction development, a semi-official technical body called Indian Road Congress was developed or was established in 1934. Uh, then by imposing additional taxation on public uh, on motor transport, that is mainly by uh, a motor spirit, then uh, that is nothing but the fuel tax for fuel. Then vehicle taxation, right? Whenever you buy a car, 10% will be the tax, motor tax. Then you have the license fees for vehicles flying for hire. So from all these addition, by uh, having additional taxation, Central Road Fund was developed in, was established in 1929. Uh, then uh, to have a dedicated research organization to carry out research and development in uh, highway, in the area of highway, Central Road Research Institute, CRRI, in, was uh, formed in 1950. So Indian Road Congress, it's an apex body of highway engineers in the country. So it's a, a committee or it's an organization. So if you are interested after signature, you can uh, enroll in this uh, organization. So IRC was uh, set up in December 1934, and it was by the recommendation of Indian Road Development Committee, also known as JICA Committee. So it provides a national form for the uh, pooling of experience and also uh, to have a discussion on high, how highway can be maintained or how highway can be constructed. And it's, it's, uh, it publishes journals, research publications, and standard specifications. So I'll just uh, show you how Indian Road Congress web page looks like. Here we can see. Yeah. So IRC, that is Indian Road Congress, they have these are the several codes. So IRC002, Route Marker Signs for National Highways. Then IRC003, Dimensions and Weight of Road Design Vehicles, then Traffic Senses, then how uh, numbering of bridges and culverts should be done. So then uh, so if you Click at IRC002. Okay, so uh, uh, I will uh, download few IRC standard codes and then um, show them in the next class. Okay. Okay, so next we have Central Road Research Institute. Any of you who are interested to be in the uh, research area, okay, you can uh, check into their website after your engineering. Constant laboratory for complex scientific and industrial research. It's a premier national research organization. The main uh, research and development program are uh, in 
payment design performance, load condition monitoring, then payment deterioration modeling, maintenance plan and management, payment management system, landslide management and hazard mitigation, geotechnical investigation, ground improvement technique, traffic engineering management, and include transportation plan technology for technology. find the project several areas or avenues that are available for the projects. Okay, so you can go to their website, CRRI, you can see their projects. So you can also understand what are the gray areas in the research and development in the area of program programs. So central road front also we have discussed the consumers of petrol for charge and extra to process. To build up this road and uh, from this, what happened was they have allocated 20% and 80% separately. 20% was uh, retained as a central revenue for research and education purposes, and 80% is being utilized. So, Ministry of Road, Transport, and Highway. Again, their uh, main responsibilities are motor vehicle legislation, administration of motor vehicles act, taxation of motor vehicles, compulsory insurance of motor vehicles, administration of road transport corporations, then provide grant and non uh, NGOs to lay down the guidelines, etc. So now to uh, quickly glance through the summary, we have seen what transportation engineering is, what are different modes of transport. Then what's the history of highway engineering and then highway planning in India. So with this, uh, we will be uh, in the next uh, session, we will be saying what is the different types of road and how road is being classified based on several parameters.